Oh, okay, let's start. Last lecture we discussed link state routing. Today we looked at next category protocol called distance vector routing. And the two protocols achieve the same thing of building the routing table, but the approaches are a bit different. In link state routing, we work with the assumption that each router knows the whole topology of the network. That is, even if I'm not directly connected, I'm router one. So I would know how router two is connected to router three, or router three is connected to router four, and so on and so forth. In this approach, each node knows only its directly connected neighbors which are directly connected links. And it does not know how the other nodes are connected. And if that means to all the nodes which are not connected to it, they start with the assumption that the link cost to those nodes is infinity. However, the difference in approach is each router get the inf information from neighboring routers about their distances to all the networks. So let's say router one is connected to router two, or router three is connected to router four, and so on and so forth. So router three would inform router two how far is router four, and then router two would inform compute the router one say how far router four is, and that way it builds up. So a node knows cost of directly connected links. And for the remaining networks, it get the information from the neighbors. Based on the information, it compute the routing and communicate that information to the neighbors. This communication happens either periodically or if there is a change. And the whole thing is there is no central computation. Each router computes its own. It is iterative in the sense that each time I receive a message from my neighbors, I recompute, communicate back to neighbors if there is a change, and iteration stops when I receive information from neighbors and there is no change in my routing, then I don't send anything, or my neighbors don't send me anything. That is when the iteration stops. That is what is called self-terminating when neighbors stop informing me about their routing update, I do not do any computation and my algorithm kinds of demand in the stop. Algorithm is called asynchronous in the sense that router one does its computation independent of the computation done by the neighbor. One router could be very fast, another router could be slow, one router could be connected to number of other routers, other router could be connected to only a few. So each one does independently without doing coordination. Hey, have you completed? Let me complete. Nothing of that kind. And that is the meaning of asynchronous. Each router works independently in computing its routing table. And if computation results in a change, it communicates back. So as we said, the topology does not allow a router to know the exact topology, a router does not know beyond its neighbor how the connectivity is. A router knows connectivity only of its neighbors and no more. It, however, knows reachability information of the remaining network, which it learns from the neighbors. So you can look at a router as a sound signpost on a path to destination. When you travel in a two-wheeler or a car or vehicle, whatever, when you come to a crossing, you basically see a signboard, a destination, how far away, and you need to take a left turn, a right turn, or a straight, or whatever. And basically, so crossing could be a router, a packet comes in, it looks at the routing table, forward the packet, and goes up. The where the computation done is a bit different than what we did in link state. 
link state routing we use Dexter algorithm. In digital structure routing, we use Bellman fold algorithm and we'll look at how does it different from what we did in the link state routing. The distance vector routing is simple and it typically works in a small network or a flat network. If network has too many hierarchy, central core, intermediate core, third core, something of that kind, then it may not do that well. Other is link state routing, you need to have a little more diagnostic knowledge because you are looking at entire topology of the network. If something goes wrong, you should be able to figure out why things are not able to get to the right cost. So when system administrators are not very smart enough to look at the whole diagnostic part, and they want to keep a simple protocol, that is also the use distance vector routing. Assumption is the network is simple and flat, and the, these protocols, the implementation such as RIP, works only with when a network has a diameter of 16, that means no network can be more than 16 half away. Further, because the iterative approach, I can receive a message, I give to my neighbor, neighbor can compute, again update, give to the neighbors, I come back. This iterative approach, the time it takes to stabilize or converge, that means the time it takes that every router has a consistent information could be longer than what you'll get in link state routing. So normally use distance vector routing when the networks are flushed. Admin network administrator is not too tech smarter to tech savvy. And you are not really care about convergence time, the time it takes to sync up every router getting the information. So how does the distance vector routing work? A simple example you can look at in this network or in this diagram, how many networks are there? Would anyone like to identify? In this given diagram, how many networks are present? Arvin Pathak. Four networks. Four networks. Yes, answer is right. It is four networks. You have a 10.1.0.0, and so on. The router one is connected to two networks directly. The router two is connected to two networks. The router three is connected to two networks. So initially, router one knows only about two networks. 10.1.0, 10.2.0 which are directly connected, so hop count as you can see here. And same is true for router two, and same is true for router three. Router three knows only two networks. Now after a while, router two would indicate to router three, look, I can reach router two within my hop count of zero. And when router three communicates this information to router three, router three says no, that router two can reach 10.2.0, and my cost to router 2 is 1. That means if I were to reach the network 10.2.0, I would R3 would send a packet to R2, which it can reach, and that hop count or distance would become 1. So similarly, when 10. router 1 updates router 2, since it can reach 10.1.0 with a hop count of 1, router 2 would update the entry saying 10.1.0 is 1. And when router 2 updates its routing table to the R3, R3 knows that R2 is saying that 10.1.0 can be reachable with a distance of 1. And from R3, R2 is distance of 1. That means R3 can reach 10.1.0.0 with a distance of 2. And that is what your routing table will look like. So this basically routing table, the net destination network, your interface, and how far you away they determine. So in routing, you don't use the hop count. You use hop count to make the routing entry, but this is what the information. And if you take the S cost, each S cost is one, then this is what the hop count would be. This is what the RIP protocol called routing interior protocol is used. But we keep a generic version 
where you look at the edge cost, which could be any value, and based on that, we will determine the routing cost. So the, we said the distance vector routing, the core part of the algorithm, the routing protocol is bellman ford algorithm, which basically says the using dynamic programming, I know from my neighbors, I look at, so notation dxy indicates cost of y from the x or the least cost path from x to the y. So it can determine it. So node x looks at all its neighbor v. Node x is connected to neighbors. So looks at all its neighbor v. It looks at their s cost. And from the s cost, it looks at what is their least cost path to uh, node y and takes a minimum over those, and that is what it updates, and we update the least cost path. So every time we get it, we compute this in our dexter algorithm, we always pick one node with the topology with the least distance and continue this. And once a node comes to my routing, the cost here it might change again, and we look at that. So CXV is the edge cost, that is edge between node X and V, DBY is least cost path to Y from node V. And we look at basically mean over all the neighbors V. And that is what my Bellman for algorithm is. We'll look at an example there. Let's say we want to compute UZ, meaning what is the distance of Z from the node U. So that means U has the three neighbors, V, W, and X. Now V, W, and X, cost to V is two as cost, cost to W is five, cost to X is one. Now we want to compute the distance of Z. So we know, let's somehow assume that distance of W to Z, V to Z, and X to Z is known. So we know, let's assume that somehow using statistical algorithm, we already computed DVZ, DXZ, and DWZ. Would somebody like to tell me what is dvz would be? Assuming it is optimally computed, what is the value of dvz, dxz, and dwz would be? Anyone? Sir, all, all are the relaxed ones or we have to relax? What do we optimize ones? Whatever, assume they computed and they got the best value. So oh, after the computation uh, doesn't change, so what would be eight. DVZ? Eight. So I think DVZ is eight. Uh, that is not true. Three, two, three. Anybody Five. else? Five. Yes, ma'am. Five, that is right. DVZ is five because you go to V to X, X to Y, and two. So two plus one plus two, DVZ is five. DXZ is three, one plus two, three. And what is DWZ? Three. Three, because we come WYZ. Now we need to use Bellman for the equation to compute DUZ. And that means we look at all the neighbors of U, V, W, and X. S cost U to V is 2. So this is the Bellman Ford equation. S cost U to V, DVZ, S cost U to X, and distance X to Z, S cost U to W, and then distance from W to Z. So C U V is 2. So it becomes 2 plus 5. U X is one, D X that is three, one plus three, and we have D W Z five plus three. Minimum happens to be four, so we compute the distance of U to Z is four, and that's the way the Bellman Ford equation really works. And so we do the computation. So look, number of neighbors is three, and this we are doing only for Z. Now, if you need to compute this for all the nodes. 
So for one node, we are doing n computations. We are doing this n additions, and then minimum over. So for one node to update this, I take order n time. And if I need to do for all the other n nodes, it will take n square time. And that is how the Bellman Ford equation works. And that's the way distance vector algorithm works. So we'll define some notations. And before we define the algorithm, so we have dxy, small dxy, the actual cost of least cost from x to y. Initially, we keep an estimate. So we keep capital dxy, which is an estimate. And we define a distance vector dx that indicate the least cost to all the nodes in the network from the node X. And this is maintained. And node X, node X, so not only node X, if you look at previous case, node X not only maintained distance vector for all the nodes, it also maintained distance vector for its neighbor V, X, and W. Because if it doesn't know this distance vector D, V, Z, it won't be able to compute. So each node maintains a distance vector not only for itself, but for all its neighbor as well. And that is what each node communicates. And we'll take a practical example to demonstrate how does this communication actually happen. So understand that part. And again, we basically we probably would have the same thing. We would have a one initialization part and second is the loop part. The key uh, com communication is, or the key crux, or the key ingredient, or the main part of the protocol is, a node will periodically communicate, and when a node receives distance vector estimate from the neighbors, it will compute Bellman, the DV using Bellman Ford equation. And Bellman Ford equation is run over all the neighbors. Even though I'm receiving information from one neighbor, when I use my Bellman Ford equation, I do comparison over all the neighbors and then update myself and communicate. And if I do any change, I send my information back to my neighbors. They will recompute and process keep repeating. And after a while, once I update it, I won't update anymore. And once I don't update anymore, my the estimate was I started with the capital DXY with converts to the small DXY, which is the actual cost. And that is what we basically look at. So algorithm attributes is iterative and asynchronous. Asynchronous meaning each node computes its distance vector routing independent of each other. Iterative meaning the iteration occurs whenever I get information. So it keeps repeating. It just means keep repeating till the next step, till the next loop iteration happens. Like if I see a for loop, it is the iteration. So anytime you tell you, you iterate over full condition. So every time you get distance vector from the neighbors, you iterate over all routing computations, and that's the way it's called iterative. Asynchronous means my computation is independent of what computation is bad and what computation is done by other nodes. Distributed, each node does the computation. There is no central computation, and that's why it is called distributed computation. So initially, each node with a start, it estimates with the equal to as cost. And for whichever node, there is no as cost, that value would be set to infinity. And then we'll basically wait for information from the neighbors. And whenever information comes, we trade over all the nodes to figure out the computing cost. And if my recomputation results in a change, we communicate back to the neighbors. And that's the way the algorithm really works. So just to say summarization, initialization, we know the S cost of certain nodes. For whichever node we know the connectivity, we put dxy as the infinity. For all others, it becomes infinity. That is what initialization part is. And after that, I need to do basically the my neighbors, because we say we need to maintain, I know my neighbors. And initially, because neighbors are not 
communicated any information to me. So for all my neighbors, their distance vector, my value would be infinity. No. So at initialization, there's two things I do in initialization. One is my distance vector initialized to my S cost for all the nodes which I'm connected, and for all other neighbors, for all other nodes which are not my neighbors, the cost is infinity. Each node maintains distance vector of the neighbor. And when I initialize, since I have not the information and no information available to me, I keep that estimate of distance to all nodes as infinity. And this is my initialization. And then I basically communicate my information to the neighbors. I'll receive information from my neighbors and let the loop start. Whenever I get information from the neighbors or I get a link change cost, maybe a cost has gone down, that means link cost has become infinity or link has come back up. So cost has down go from infinity to some smaller value. So either a link cost occurs or I get a message from neighbor I do the computation using Bellman code expression, which is for each of my neighbors, look at the S cost and look at the distance vector which I'm maintaining, which I received earlier. So distance vector I'm maintaining for my neighbor and the S cost do the sum and find the mean over it. I'm not looking at my current value. I'm always computing the mean value based on the S cost and the distance vector of the neighbor. So for a certain node, if distance vector of neighbor says it becomes something else, I will put the new value. I'm not comparing with my current minimum value. It is always my S cost to the neighbor and what distance vector neighbor has told me. And that is what I compute. And if anything has changed from previously, I update that. And that is what the whole DV algorithm is. Now we take an example here. Let's take a very simple example of this network of three nodes. When we start with initialization, so there could be multiple nodes. Let's say one more node, W here. So this column would contain all the nodes, but row indicates the distance vector of my neighbor. So assuming there is a one more node, W connected to Y. So each routing table each would have all the four columns. But only Y would have four rows, X, Y, dot, W, but other only three, three rows, because each row corresponds to myself and my neighbors, whereas column corresponds to all the nodes in the network. So when I start with for node X, we want to compute routing table of this network topology using distance vector routing. So for node X, S goes to Y is two, for myself, I'll take my S cost to zero because I can always reach. So X2, X is zero, X2, Y is two, X2, Z is seven, and that is what I maintain. At initialization, I haven't received any information from my neighbors Y and Z. So I keep distance vector of Y as estimate of infinity and distance vector estimate of router Z as again as infinity. Same thing is done for node y, node y distance to x is 2, to myself is 0, to node z is 1, so dv of y is 2, 0, 1, and a distance vector of x and z is infinity because I'm here to get the information. Same is true for z, z is connected to both, it is z to receive distance vector from x and y, so it keeps this distance vector as infinity, and it knows that Z to X is S7, so I keep the S cost 7. Y to Z is 1, and myself is 0. We keep that. Now, after the initialization, each node communicates a distance vector to the neighbors. So X communicate this information to Y and Z. Similarly, Y communicate this information to X and Z, and Z communicate this information to X and Y. Now, in this graph, they may appear they're happening together. They need not be together. They could be doing any point in time. So all such communication could be asynchronous, meaning when X communicate to Y, Y could get information at time T1, where the same information could be received by Z at T2 because of link cost, propagation, or whatever. 
So even though you might look there coming together and while do computers and you may do together, but each time I communicate, we run our DV algorithm, Dalmer Food algorithm and update. Now look what happens when Y communicate this information to node X. So node update the distance vector received from Y. So previously it was infinity. Now this distance vector becomes 201. And similarly at node Z, the distance vector Y becomes 201. Similarly, when Z communicates a distance vector 710, when this information is come to the X, X will update distance vector of Z from infinity to 710. And similarly, Y would update this to 710. And same way, when X communicates, node Y and node Z will come update the distance vector of X, which is 0 to 7 and 0 to 7. Now let's look at use a Bellman Ford equation and look at what the values are. Using the Bellman Ford equation, we have a distance vector of y with the distance vector of z, and we know the s cost. When we know the s cost, what would the value distance vector of y and distance vector of z would be? The least cost part, using Bellman Ford equation, what would be the value for y and z would be? And you would like to give me the answer. This is the Bellman Ford equation. For node x, I want to find my estimate of y. I have two neighbors. I look at my s cost to both the neighbors, and I have their distance vector. And because the distance vectors, so what's the value for y would be now? Anyone? Anyone like to answer? Let me look at the names. Aisha. Noor. Isa Iram. None of you are there. Look like none of you are there. Sasant. Yeah. What is the value of y would be using this Bellman Ford equation? What is the value I would get for y? What is CXY? To what is dyy, y indicating to itself. So dyy is 0. So this becomes cxy is 2 and dy is 0. So this is 2 plus 0. cxz is 7 and z2x is z2y is 1. So, so cxz is 7 and z indicated to x that is, this can reach x with a distance of 7. So you get the cxz7 and z2y is 1. So put, we are computing the cost y. So min of cxy, which is 2, plus dyy is 0, cxz is 7, cxz is 7, and 1. And then we look at the so minimum happens to be 2. And so we keep the cost as 2. There is no change. What happened to the cost of Z? Same formula, cost to Z is X has two neighbors, so cost of X to Y, and estimate of Z from Y, cost of X to Z, and estimate of Z from Z. What is the value of CXY? CXY is 2, and estimate of Y to Z Cxy is 2, and estimate of y to z is 1. 
So this becomes 2 plus 1. Cx2z is 7. And estimate of Z2z is 0. So this becomes 7 plus 0. So 2 plus 1, 7 plus 0. Minimum happens to be 3. And I update 3. So I'm computing this irrespective of what my previous values are. Now I know that my this distance vector previously was 0 to 7. Now it has become 0 to 3. Has my distance vector changed? Yes, because it was 0 to 7. Now it becomes 0 to 3. So distance vector has changed. Because it has changed, X will communicate its distance vector to both the neighbors Y and Z. Can you compute this for y and tell me whether anything would change for y? Let's compute for y and tell me that the, after recomputation, because y received distance vector of x and distance vector of z, which were infinity earlier, does the distance vector of y after computation change it? Anyone? Take two minutes, compute, and do that. is muted. Hello. Yes, sir. Now we can hear you. You would have told me if I'm you're not able to hear me if my mic, mic is muted. Since how long you were not able to hear me? Just now, sir, one minute ago. Oh, not okay. 
So can somebody tell me the values of y now? The, after these values, what the value of y would become? I want to compute the estimate of y to x. What are the neighbors of y? Neighbors of y are x and z. So s cost of y to x is 2. And what does x say about itself? 0. And y to z is 1. And what does z say is about x? 7. Basically, 2 plus 0 and 7 min, you'll basically get min of 2. So min of c y to x plus estimate of x to x, y to s cost y to z, and estimate of x from z. So c y x is 2, x to x estimate is 0, you get 2 plus 0, c y z is 1, and z to x total is 7, so 1 plus 7, minimum is 2, so we keep it 2 here. What happens to z? Again, we look at, we want to what estimate of z, y has two neighbors, so we'll look at y to x, y to x is 2, and x to z estimate is 7. So this becomes 2 plus 7. Similarly, y to z is 1, and z to z estimate is 0, so this becomes 1 plus 0, and that means new value is 2, 0, 1, Old value is 201. There is no change. That means this node Y would not compute, would not transmit this information to the neighbor. When the node Z computes, does it change? Can you guys compute using the same bulb and forward equation? You got a distance vector of X. You have a distance vector of Y. You know the S cost of X and Y. Can you compute and tell me what the values would be? What would be dzx and dzy? We look at dzx, s cos z2x7 plus estimate of x2x, which is 0. So this becomes 7 plus 0. Z is another neighbor y. So cost of zy, which is 1. And estimate of y to x is 2. So this becomes 1 plus 2. So min of 7 plus 0, 1 plus 2 is 3. So this value becomes 3. Similarly, z to y. There's two neighbors, x and y. So you look at z to cost of s cost z to x, which is 7. An estimate of <coughs> y to y, which is 0. And similarly, you look at z to y and cos z to y and then estimate of y to y. So first is z to x, z to x is 7, and x to y, x to y is 2, 7 plus 2, and z to y is 1, and estimate of y to y is 0. So 1 plus 0, so minimum is 1. You update this, so this becomes 1. So now you look at the value. This G, value of z has changed from to 310. Previously, it was 710. So values, computation for x has changed. Computation of z has changed. Computation of y has not changed. So X will communicate this distance vector 0 to 3 to its neighbor. Similarly, Z will communicate this distance vector to its neighbor. And once they compute, when Z updates 310, so X will update the distance vector of Z to 310. It has got only from Z and not from Y. Because it got from Z, is going to recompute. Similarly, Y, even though nothing has changed for Y, but y is getting value 0, 2, 3, and 3, 1, 0, 0, 2, 3 from x, and 3, 1, 0 from y is going to recompute. Similarly, node z has got from x 0, 2, 3. It did not get anything from y, because y did not change. But because it has got the change value from x, it is going to recompute. 
and after the computation, the distance vector computation of z does not change, neither changes for y, nor it changes for x. Because it does not change, so the computation stops, or what we say, iteration stops. And because iteration stops, we all get the routing information, and that's the way it works. The primary challenge with distance vector routing is it can lead to a routing loop or what is called count to infinity. So let me give you quickly what let me say go back. Let's look at this case. Currently, we know that one thing is stabilized. Router 2 keeps the information that it can reach 10 dot fold or 0 with a cost of 1. And router 2 will send this information to R1 as well as R3. R2 will tell R1 I can reach 10 dot 4 with a cost of 1. It will tell R3 that it can reach 10 dot 4 with a cost of 1. Now assume some point in time this link breaks down. The link R3 to the 10 dot 4 0, this interface goes down. A link breaks down. The moment it breaks down, R2 updates that I can reach 10 dot 4 with a cost of 1. Now R3 thinks that R2 says it can reach the network 10 dot 4 with a cost of 1, and my cost to R2 is 1. That means if I go via R2, I can reach this network with a cost of 2, and it updates an entry. And because it updates the distance vector estimate, it will communicate this information to R2. Now R2 has got, a, previously it was, estimated value was, for this network was zero from Z. Now R2 sees the new value of estimated fold dot zero is two. It does recomputation. It says it is one, my S cost, and R3 says Z is two, it updates it three. It communicates back, R3 updates to four, and this process goes on, and this is what is called count to infinity. So some bad loop and bad communication timings could create this trouble, and we get into count to infinity. Your book has another example. Look at that example, and that is what the problem with distance vector routing. Count to infinity means it will keep on increasing forever, and that is meant becomes so convergent it never stops. And that's the reason they always keep some max value. So one implementation of distance vector routing is called RIP, RIP protocol, which basically keeps it max value of 16. So anytime max distance becomes 16, it simply stops. So it has a slow convergence because it can keep increasing, and then you might have a trouble there. So my link cost increases. Work out the example in the book, look at it, and that is called count infinity problem. And that's the way distance vector routing does not work, could have problems. So the only solution is R2 should never inform R3 about distance of 10.4. Because it learned 10.4 from R3, and if it's updating R3 about 10.4, then I'm basically miscommunicating. And that's what they say is, R2 should never inform the neighboring routers about the route which it learned from them. Or it can inform R3 that distance is infinity, so that R4 never computes wrongly. So count infinity problem is you basically do for Poisson reverse, either don't inform or inform with a very high cost, which is infinity, so that R3 never computes it wrongly. So basically it means whatever routes R2 learns from R3, it would not inform R3 about those routes. Whatever network R2 learn from R1, it will not inform R1 about the same route. That means R2, when send a distance vector, will not send the information about 10.1 to R1. R2 would not send distance vector information about 10.4 to R3. And there's the one way, other ways, you want to be consistent because then you have to be selective which vectors. So for consistency, you inform about 10.4, but say cost is infinity. And that means R3 would not learn. So these are the issues that would work, and that's the way distance vector routing protocol works. So to summarize, 
It is different from link state routing. Each router knows only its neighbors. It knows cost to neighbors. It maintains distance vector of its neighbors. In link state routing, it maintains topology, but in this case, it maintains distance vector of all its neighbors. And whenever it gets a new information from the neighbors, it does recomputation. And as the link cost changes, it does the recomputation. If any time computation changes, it informs the neighbor. And that's the way distance vector routing protocol. So next lecture, we look at IPv6. How does IPv6 work? What the same scheme are? And tomorrow we have a class, and I believe our class time is 10 to 11. Tomorrow, Saturday timetables, we would have a class 10 to 11, and we'll resume from there. So my recommendation is study, look at it, and I'll update this class notes. So all my lecture notes are updated, uploaded in MS Teams. Please look into that. I upload the recording lecture as well. So any questions, please feel free. Let me know any questions, otherwise I'll stop here, and we should be done. If no questions, then I'll stop. Thank you.